Has someone made a change to the Matrix? Hey guys, I'm Rebecca from Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 weirdest Mandela effects. After being shot at, after being shot by an unknown assailant, by an unknown assailant, during a motorcade drive through downtown Dallas, during a motorcade drive through downtown Dallas. What is the Mandela effect? Well, you could also call it collective false memory, and we're looking at the most curious examples of it. Whether these are truly false memories or uh, examples of alternate realities, these strange discrepancies have thrown us all for a loop. All right, we begin by learning how it got the name Mandela Effect. Number 10. Nelson Mandela Died in Prison Let's start our list off with a memory that gives the Mandela Effect its name. South African President Nelson Mandela spent 27 years in prison before being released in 1990. Or was he? A great number of people seem to remember Mandela dying in prison, and reading about this fact in textbooks or seeing it on the news. Even Mandela's actual death in 2013 from a respiratory infection did little to quell the uneasy feeling in people's minds that something about the world or their minds had been altered. As strange as that is, though, it's only the tip of the iceberg. Number 9. Beam Me Up, Scotty! The Star Trek Franchise This line is as synonymous with Star Trek as Live Long and Prosper. It's just a little weird that no one in the show or films ever actually says it. Scotty, beam me up. Most often attributed to Captain Kirk, this exact phrase is not spoken by anyone in the franchise. Although, in fairness, similar wordings like the voyage home Scotty beam me up were used from time to time. Well, beam me up, Slappy. <laughs> That's Scotty, sir. Ah, uh, geek test. I'm busted. <laughs> but why does this misattribution have the omnipresence of Q? Do people just like the sound of it? Did someone tamper with our timeline? Or did a transporter accident send some of us into a mirror universe? Number 8. Wasn't Osama bin Laden already dead? We all know how Osama bin Laden died. The 2011 night raid by Navy SEALs on his compound that ended the infamous terrorist's life is well known the world over, and was even the subject of feature films. And yet, there are a large number of people that recall Osama bin Laden being caught and even dying before 2011. The United States has conducted an operation that killed Osama bin Laden, the leader of Al-Qaeda. Some remember it being from kidney failure in a hospital, while others believe he died during the 9-11 attacks. Terrorists are known for spreading half-truths and rumors, so it's possible the people are remembering intentionally spread falsehoods. But the widespread nature of the belief is suspicious regardless. Number 7. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Your childhood might not look the same after this. As we all know good and well, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood always began with its titular host singing its theme song. It's a beautiful day in this neighborhood, a beautiful day for a neighbor. This much is true, but that well-known opening line, it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood, not so much. Although it doesn't scan quite as well, it's actually a beautiful day in this neighborhood. But how did we all miss this when we've heard the song so, so many times in our youth? It's one hell of a day in my neighborhood. A hell of a day for a neighbor. It could be worse, we suppose. It's not like he was wearing leather jackets instead of cardigan sweaters this whole time. Number 6. Starring Sinbad, Shazam. Quick question. Who starred in the 90s movie about a genie? I am Shazam! Some of us correctly recall it being NBA star Shaquille O'Neal, who had a sporadic movie career throughout the 90s. However, others believe the star of the film in question was the comedian and actor Sinbad, who starred in a number of children's films during that same time period. Racism! That's what Jesse Jackson was talking about! Others also believe this non-existent film starring Sinbad was called Shazam rather than Kazam, which they claim is something else entirely. Are people conflating multiple movies in their minds? If only we had a genie to magically solve this mystery. Number 5. Hello, Clarice. The Silence of the Lambs. When Dr. Hannibal Lecter greets Agent Clarice Starling from his cell, a lot of us remember him saying, Hello, Clarice, in that chilling tone. After all, that's the quote that everyone references all over pop culture. Good evening, Clarice. Yet, in reality, Dr. Lecter never says this quote in The Silence of the Lambs, even if he approximates it in the sequel. Is this Clarice? Uh, hello, Clarice. He says good morning to her and even good evening, Clarice, but never that infamous quote. So, 
are people simply misquoting the film because hello works at all hours of the day? Hello, Clarice. Or is there a more sinister explanation at work? Number four, JFK's car had four people in it, we think. For as momentous and tragic a moment as it was, you'd think there'd be more consensus about the details surrounding the assassination of President John F. Kennedy. However, we're not talking about a second shooter or any of the other conspiracies surrounding the event. Instead, ask yourself, how many people were in the car? Most reenactments and references in pop culture show four people in the car when JFK is assassinated, but there were actually six. The design of the car is a bit uncommon, so that may contribute to the discrepancy. But like we said, it's such a famous moment that we're not sure how so many could forget. Number three, mirror, mirror on the wall, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Slave in the magic mirror, come from the father's space. Yeah, we know you know this one. It's one of the most iconic scenes of Disney's very first full-length animated films, and it's subsequently been used in media countless times when a character sneaks a peek at their reflection or consults a magic looking glass. Mirror, mirror on the wall, is this not the most perfect kingdom of them all? There was even a so-so 2012 Snow White movie called Mirror, Mirror. The thing is, the evil queen did not say that. If you're leafing through your handy German copy of the Brothers Grimm tale, then there actually is a case that Mirror Mirror is correct, given that the word repeats twice, but let's be honest. You are quoting the Disney movie, and the iconic villainess says Magic Mirror on the wall. Maybe time for a rewatch. Magic Mirror on the wall, who is the fairest one of all? Preferably with friends whose minds can be blown by this new information. Number two, was it the Baron Stain or the Baron Steen Bears? You know that series of slightly saccharine children's books about a family of bears and the cartoons based off them? What were they called? The Berenstein Bears are remembered by many as part of their childhoods. However, they aren't the Berenstein Bears at all. They're the Baron Stain Bears. The Baron Stain Bears. The Baron Stain Bears. The easy explanation is that names that end in Steen are far more common than those that end in Stain. And a lot of us were exposed to the stories as kids and misread or misheard the titles multiple times. Yeah. While some of us can shake it off, for others, this is a stain on reality. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I'm on Team Berenstein. By the way, have you ever heard the theory that we're not actually misremembering the name when it comes to Berenstein and Berenstein, but it's actually proof of like parallel universes or something? Seriously, Google it. Anyway, number one is an even more widespread Mandela effect. Any idea what it is? All right, let's find out after these honorable mentions, one of which is a serious pet peeve of mine. Who is this ghastly man? Ace Ventura, pet detective. And you must be the Monopoly guy. Give me a break, give me a break. Break me off a piece of that Kit Kat bar. quite at the end yet. Almost there though. Just be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. All right, back to business. Number one, Luke, I am your father. Star Wars episode five, The Empire Strikes Back. The immortal line is more mortal than you think. He told me you killed him. No, I am your father. <laughs> ever heard of Star Wars knows this quote. Yet in the actual film, Darth Vader says to Luke, no, I am your father. Countless pop culture references and legions of dedicated Star Wars fans still manage to somehow get this quote wrong. You killed my father. No, Buzz, I am your father. No! So what's the deal? Have we all just misquoted it because Luke provides more context? Or have some of us come to this reality from far, far away? Luke, I am your father. This isn't the only Star Wars example of the Mandela effect either. Just check out C-3PO's leg sometime. 
You know, I don't recommend using misremembered movie quotes as like a party trick because you will not be popular at that party. You know guys, um, Darth Vader actually says, no, I am your father. Super, super popular. Am I Steve Urkel now? I don't know. Um, anyway, which Mandela effect blew you away the most? Let us know in the comments. Be sure to like and subscribe and check out this other video where I promise I won't do my nerd voice.